Fishing and hunting in the outdoors in my life is like the top priority. I don't know anything else. Like just for me, that it is 100% of my world. This is what I do, this is what I live to do. And if it's on the teaching side or volunteer side or actually on the water, that's the only way that I truly feel great because it does make me happy and I want to pay that forward to other people to make them happy. For us, fishing has always been about more than catching fish. It's about the people, places, and experiences along the way. The experiences that become our stories, enrich our world, and bring us together. With this series, our goal is to find the untold, captivating stories changing the world of fishing. All the good stuff happening every day, everywhere, that makes this a sport we love. I'm Nicole Stone. And I'm Natalie Dillon. Welcome to Covering Water. Today we're talking to Mandy Yurick, a woman who has spent her life outdoors. With roots as a walleye angler, to hunting, guiding, competitive bass fishing, and almost 20 years at the Department of Natural Resources, she's shown she can pretty much do it all. And that's just the beginning. Stay put, stay tuned, and enjoy. How's it going? Hey guys, I'm glad you made it. Thanks for having us. Welcome to the Brainerd Lakes area. Got a good day for it. Welcome to my casa. Awesome. <laughs> my little piece of paradise. Let's see it. <laughs> All beautiful. right, come on in. Come on in. This is home? This is home. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. It looks like you. That's what we'd expect. <laughs> Very cabiny. Lots of dead things. Yeah. yeah, I love it. <laughs> Want the quick tour and then we'll go check out the shop? Yeah, sounds All right, good. let's check it out. Let's go. <laughs> All right, there's one. Maisie oh Moo, come on. Come on, old lady. Very friendly, Hi. very old, very sweet. Mm. Oh my goodness. So this is the family. This is this is two out of the five. Four <laughs> the dogs and a cat. Oh wow. So you haven't met the rest of the yeah. family yet. Come on in, I'll let these guys out. This is the shop. This oh. is the boat home. <laughs> boat like stuff. <laughs> and are these all deer that you've hunted? Yeah. I don't even know where to start. You've got everything up here. You're a, you're a busy woman. What's your favorite photo up here? Probably this one. Like This was on the In Fishman calendar. So I wasn't the first official I got. In one year I had two cover shots. I had the fall and then the ice series. So this looks like one of the older pictures up here. It I know walleye is kind of what you started on. Tell us how you got into fishing. Uh, actually, so I grew up in North Dakota and I spent a lot of time on Devil's Lake. My dad was an avid fisherman and kind of turned into a local guide. Uh, we ended up with a little small resort out there. So my summers were spent on the water there, begging and pleading when I was little to go, go along and nobody says no to the little girl with a fishing pole, even though my dad was annoyed to bug all his clients and his friends. but. Yeah, for the first 18 years, uh, predominantly I fished uh, walleye, pike, and perch because that's what there is in Devil's Lake. So you said your dad taught you how to fish. Did everyone in your family fish? No, no they don't. My brothers hate fishing. They absolutely loathe it. Um, I think because it was work and they just didn't ever get into it. You either love it or you don't. And it wasn't four hours on the water. It was 12 hours on the water with dad. And it was, you heard for three hours, oh, just one more cast, you know, just one more pass for trolling. And it didn't matter if it was nice weather or really bad weather. And it's always windy in North Dakota, so it's always rough. <laughs> so the only daughter and the only one that fished. Yep. There you go. <laughs> You have done a lot. How do you get time to fit all this in? Plus, you're obviously full time with the DNR. Like so DNR job comes first. Um, this past year is 19 years in on it, but I don't have any free time. I take my vacation time from DNR to do other activities, and there is no taking vacation to go on vacation. Well, technically, hunting and fishing trips are my vacation, so <laughs> that's that's how I've done it. All right, you kids stay. Bye, guys. I think Mandy's drive comes from growing up fishing and continually wanting to be better at it. She 
always, whether it's any kind of species, she does it the right way and she figures out how to do it. I just think it comes from growing up in the outdoor world. I've known Mandy for about six or seven years and we actually met fishing one day and started talking. Turns out we had a lot of mutual friends, so then we started fishing together and we occasionally do a hunting trip and so ever since then she's been one of my fishing buddies. So what are some of your favorite memories you know, with your dad growing up fishing? We had went out and it was not nice. Like it was even windier than normal for North Dakota, <laughs> pretty rough. And I, I was being a pest and begging and begging and begging. And I think he thought if we would just went out for a little bit that it'd be too rough and I'd come in. So we go out and we're fishing away and I catch a fish. And I remember it's just peeling drag and little kid, right? And he's like, stop reeling against the drag. So I'm like listening to him and we get it in and it's like this, I don't know, not a trophy, but 20 some inch walleye. And I was like super excited. That one by far, my, hearing my dad tell that story so many times to other people or people telling me that story that my dad had told them, um, it's super neat. So you grew up obviously fishing walleyes, some pan fish. When did this transition to bass fishing happen? Billy Linder, actually, who I have worked with the Linders before I had moved up here, uh, so join Bass Club. I'm like, don't they have a Wally League or something that I can? He's like, just join a Bass Club. Well, I did it, I loved it. Um, I learned a lot, and off the bat, like, I was good at it. How did your dad take the news? He didn't, he didn't at all. I called, told him that I was selling my, uh, selling my tiller and I was buying a bass boat, and it was crickets on the phone. Uh, I thought he was joking, then I thought he hung up, and yeah, he was not, he was not happy at all. <laughs> so you were obviously, I mean, super brave as a kid, bold, and you've done so much alone from like your solo hunting to fishing and things like that. Has there ever been a time that you think that you got in a situation and you were like, maybe I've taken this too far? Maybe I'm pushing it too much? There's been a few dicey situations. One was a bear hunt that I did up uh, in Isabella, and I went up and I ended up shooting a bear. and. Uh, uh, the temp went from like 70 to like 31, like that. It dropped. I tried following it and it was bog and I fell through the bog and it's, you know, 30 degrees and I'm lucky I didn't drown. Wolf hunting in negative 47 degrees, also not very intelligent by yourself. There's probably a lot of those stories. <laughs> I'm like, I probably shouldn't have done that, <laughs> realistically. Yeah. When you go on these solo adventures, do you ever feel that fear, like nervousness or fear before you go, like of just worrying about something going wrong or? I feel like I'm prepared for the worst case scenario at all times. People like Mandy do a lot. They love the competitive stuff, but they also love introducing new people into it. You might teach somebody how to fish and in a couple of years they're fishing against you and that's what she really likes. She's always showing people how to do stuff and donating time and donating equipment to kids. So that's one great thing I like to share about her. I wish people would do more and it doesn't have to be at this you know, prolific level. If it's taking a kid out for a boat ride, teaching them how to drive, something. Maybe that next kid that I take fishing or that you know I scoop up and, and mentor may be that person. Social media, both on the good and the bad, has really brought fishing to the forefront. It is ridiculously blown up in just the last six years. So that's been a huge forum there on like on the social side to really push that realm. If there was more females in fishing, I wouldn't be anything spectacular. And I want to get to that day where everything that I do and everything that I have done is just the same as everybody else. Then it wouldn't be anything different. That's the only fact that I get the attention that I get is because there's so few of us that are in the industry yeah. doing it. We're hitting a sleeper lake today. It's actually in the city limits of Baxter. Great rec lake, uh, not a lot of people realize it's a phenomenal bass lake. It also, it holds largemouth and smallmouth, but good pike and panfish. So we're heading over there. Morning. Morning ladies. How's it going? It's going. Are you gonna get on them today? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. She's been a grind and she's gonna start blowing pretty hard this afternoon, so. We gotta jump on it, jump on it early. Let's get it. I 
I want us all three to throw something different, just like if we were tournament angling, figure out what they want, yeah. and then really pay attention if we do start getting some bites at where you are in that cast. So I'll put us on the outside weed line edge, so we're fishing everything from shallow all the way to deep. And then once we get an idea of what they want, um, we'll slow down a little bit more. I'm thinking they're gonna be active, like they're hungry, yeah. right? They gotta eventually eat, so um, we're gonna first try and target active fish before we start yeah. grinding it out. Those, that, that is the most handy tool. I know, oh. it's everywhere with me. I yeah. love that thing. Moment of truth, what's everyone going with? I'll take whatever you guys aren't. I'll, Ooh, I'm gonna go with bait. Weedy in here. You can just launch this too. There's one. Oh. How did it look? It's okay. Okay. There we go. These are healthy fish. Chunker. Chunker. Nice, healthy little guy. So these are about like the max, right? Like they look fat, they got wide shoulders, nice little healthy belly on them. Realistically, it's probably like a, a two pounder, you know? Thank you. <laughs> I think they're confused. They're con as confused as we are. <laughs> yes. You gonna net it? Nice. Hey, we'll take it. <laughs> A little chunk. Nice. Yeah. That's how we start our morning, friends. Yes. Beautiful. Did he ran at the boat too, right when he, right when I hooked up? I was like, don't come off, don't come off. He played nice. Thanks, friend. We got ourselves a pound and a half. We're on the board. All right, let's get some more. So, what do you think makes you an excellent bass angler? Time on the water experience, being a biologist doesn't hurt at all. Uh, just understanding the, the full nature of how everything interconnects, uh, even between the different species and how they affect each other on different bodies of water. Oh, nice bass. Oh, yes. Hey, guys. Look at that chunk. Another good nice. one. Nice. I even love these guys. They're gorgeous and they smell great. <laughs> They don't smell all pikey. They don't spear you. You can't eat them, but I mean, you can go and catch these, let them go, and come back and catch them again. What else do you need in the fish? Exactly. If people would just understand a few of the basics that go on, like this whole puzzle would come together for people, and that's what I base pretty much everything on. So, what's currently going on in like our situation, like? barometric pressure, weather forecast, like is it high pressure, do we just get an epic cold front? There's all these little things going on all the time, I love it. And it's like the only time, I know it sounds like it's all this stuff that's super complicated, but I get on the water and I'm actually able to just focus for what's going on in that moment and be in the moment of trying to figure out what's going on where it's the greatest puzzle that's absolutely relaxing. It's gonna be a... It looks good. It feels good. Come on, come on. Dang! Well, you know what? No, it's not a big pike. They are rampant. I don't want to. I'm like, I got it. Let's no, slack okay. over. We're not hauling all that in here. No. Yeah! <laughs> it's it a. Any more perfect? That is the perfect pike catch right there. Watching somebody uh, use a skill or a technique that you've taught them is mind-blowing it's invigorating it's it's everything it's 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 paying it forward to the ultimate level of teaching somebody to do something for themselves right because not only did you just give that person a power but a power that's going to fuel them to drive them farther that they in turn can pay for it and teach somebody else if it's as simple as is tying a knot a different kind of knot to use for a specific line or a, or a lure a lot of people love the outdoors, you know, love fishing, love hunting, but you decided to make it your career, really go all in. Talk to us about how that happened, how that decision was made. I wanted to be a fishing guide. <laughs> my, my whole goal was I was going to be a fishing and hunting guide, and uh, my dad's like, no, he's like, you're going to school. 
like, hands down, you're going to school. When you graduate, he's just like, we'll talk about it then. I remember like calling my dad and I'm like, hey, yeah, so I think I'm gonna be a wildlife biologist. And he's like, I always saw you more as a vet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see, like, I literally bring home every stray animal yeah. possible, and that has started <laughs> since I was knee high. Yeah, so where I'm at currently is the Habitat Program Administrator for Fish and Wildlife. I do habitat for the whole state, <laughs> 100%, uh, all the contracting, the funding, and I love it. Oh, here's one. Don't be a pike. Talk to me. Oh, it's a bass. Yes. It's a bass. <laughs> It's not huge, but it gave us a little show, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. He wants to be seen. Thanks, bud. Oh, there's a spotty, too. Nice! Yeah, what's... Whoop. <laughs> Good little fish. Okay, maybe it's about the same size as my first one. It's bigger, it's bigger. It's it, bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> Wave goodbye. It's not very often that I pull up on a boat with three chicks in it, but <laughs> you know, I did go out on Mille Lacs the other day and there was a girl completely by herself in a boat fishing. And I don't think like she got it, but like I pulled up and I was like, right on, babe. <laughs> and I'm sure she was like, what? <laughs> but there's one, there's one. Ooh, nice. Oh, that slammed it. <laughs> that slammed it. <laughs> Way oh to go. my gosh, he smoked it. I'm gonna probably just flip this one in. Oh, it's good! No, I don't want to flip it. I don't want to flip it. Don't. Oh my gosh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, this is a netter all day. Nice job. Yeah, I'll pick it out. Yep. There we go. There we go. Nice! Yay! Smoked it! Stick with the same bait all day. It's doing me good. Heck yeah. There was no guesswork with this fish. Actually felt a little bigger than it was, but it's a nice healthy one. They're feeding girls. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, talk to me. That's a bass, it's a bass. We're good. Oh, come on, buddy. Yes, the bite is picking up. I can flip him in. Get him in and get that up here. And... Look at that. Nice. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just barely out of I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. The bite has really started to heat up. This is awesome. There he goes. Awesome. This is a blast. Well, if you're going to catch one, catch a good one, I guess. Come here, buddy. That's a little nicer. Not a little hammer handle, thank goodness. Let him go. So Mandy, how welcome did you feel when you did start tournament angling? I don't like to dwell on the negative, but uh, I've been back of the boat and put in 60 feet of water, had my boat motor sugared, had my tires, uh, the air let out, I've had lines cut. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it was daunting for sure, but there's nothing you can do about it. You just pick yourself up and keep going. It does, it takes a drive. Um, I'm getting a little nervous, like I was always called the Energizer Bunny because I just go, go, go all the time. And, and I feel it. I feel it physically and I feel it mentally. Like, I'm, I'm a jalopy. I've had six knee surgeries. <laughs> I've had rotator cuff surgery, carpal tunnel surgery. It's like, I want to do what I can do as hard as I can and as long as I can until I can't do it. I just couldn't imagine, like, more than 24 hours, though, of not doing this. It starts to... I don't know, it seems a little tedious. Like, you'd purposely have to do something else, but why would you want to do anything else, right? <laughs> I don't think he's, he's little. What are you, buddy? Oh, maybe not, he was just coming at me. <laughs> Get out of the way. Oh, baby. Yes. Oh, look how dark that is. Wow, look at that bucket mouth on him. This is what we're looking for out here. Big mouth. I had a bunch of people throughout my lifetime that did random acts of kindness at the most perfect times. It kept happening throughout my life and I feel like I have this like 
debt that no matter what I do, like I can never repay because I look at all those instances and I'm like, if one person hadn't stepped in when they stepped in, where would I be today? To pay it forward, like even when I'm super tired and I just worked a 12 hour a day, like I'm gonna find the room to take that kid fishing. I'm gonna make space to fit in that seminar or to volunteer for, for Bo and come up, you know, it might take me three weeks to put together a whole program and line up the guides and get them on the water, but it's, it's my niche and that's the only way that I truly feel great because it does make me happy and I wanna pay that forward to other people to make them happy. Once people get involved, if they have a passion for the outdoors, anything to do with the outdoors, they're going to be more involved and more passionate on the conservation side. So if you can tie someone's passion into the conservation side, that's what's going to continue. Yeah, so we do have these capabilities to move forward in the future and other generations will have them. Once again, definitely green, you know, in case you didn't get it before. <laughs> Yeah. We definitely hit the like perfect timing this morning. <laughs> Got the bike going before the epic weather hit. It worked. <laughs> I'll take it. Like yeah, it worked out. This is my like my dream place for living currently right now, but I don't think I could ever take back growing up there. That work ethic that was instilled to me like on the farm has definitely carried me through like my life and my career. It's a great place to grow up. I mean, you know, you go to the grocery store in January and you leave your car running and didn't have to lock the doors and. Gosh, you're probably, yeah, here's like 90 miles from so much. Like I literally can yeah. go each direction and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Where I grew up, this was up north. Like people said, going up north, you know. It, it's, like, it's for for you guys, is, it's yeah. not no. it was south of where you guys came from, but it's still. You don't get north until you can touch the Canadian border, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Mandy, you work for the NR guided, you volunteer, you compete. What is it that keeps you so motivated? This is my life. This has been my education, my career, my free time. It's my passion. It's what drives me every single day. And that opportunity to continue to pay it forward, it, it's something that's giving back to me while I'm still giving out. And I think we can all agree you're, you're somebody who's pretty much done it all. I don't think that there's anything that you haven't accomplished. So we gotta know what's next for you. Nothing's planned. You know, I take it every to opportunity as it comes and that's that's the hardest part is making sure that you can make the most of all those opportunities, but realistically whatever comes, comes. Friends, that is all that we have for you today, but we hope that you loved episode one of Covering Water. There's plenty more on the way, so be sure to stay tuned. See you soon! That was good. <laughs>